Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyborg Pirate, cyborgpirate.com. Glad to have you here. If you are not currently a member of Cyborg Pirate, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Please feel free to do so. Also like and share if you like our content. This is going to be reviews of UTV stuff, uh, accessories, places to ride, shops and uh, accessory dealers, also uh, dealerships themselves. Also, we are going to be reviewing dive gear, dive shops, dive ops, boat ops, and also the uh, marine use of uh, different products to how we maintain our boats and keep those in. But today we're going to be reviewing the Razorback 3.0 belt temp gauge. Now this is an infrared gauge that measures directly off the belt itself. It's a real time. It's not measuring the temperature inside the compartment here. It's actually measuring the belt itself. Now Razorback gives you a couple of different options on where you can mount these. Um, and by the way, this is for the non-turbo models. Turbo models mount in a little bit different location. So we're gonna talk about the non-turbo models, the XP1000 and XP1, or XP900s. So, a couple of places they have you mount is right here. Now you don't wanna to go too far up because this is ductwork for your exhaust from the clutch itself, the clutch housing. So they'll have you mount it here. Some of them you can mount right here at about the three o'clock position. This is all over your secondary clutch, by the way. What I did is I actually mounted mine directly over the belt. If I move this out of the way, there is my sensor right there. So the way I did this was I removed the cover, I removed my secondary clutch, and then I was able to drill straight up through it. The reason I picked this location was because there's a metal plate inside this right here that will help keep that a little bit firm. It's also easier to tighten. I also use some black RTV sealant, the ultra black, which is a high temp sealant, but I also like the fact that it's black and it blends in with the razor itself. It's not showing the blue or the red uh, coloring right there. One thing I will caution you with, right behind where you're drilling, this is your main wiring harness right here. That main wiring harness, you don't wanna hit that. So I would tell you, place something between that and where the drill bit's going to come up as you're drilling in from the bottom going up that direction. The reason I did it that way and removed that secondary clutch was so I could drill there and not have to try to get a drill in any one of these other locations in here from outside the housing. A lot of people are, that's the way a lot of people do it. It's actually kind of difficult to do that. So I don't recommend that. Now, that belt temp uh, sensor, it, as I said, is infrared. So it gives you real time information as you're going. I'm currently using the Razorback 3.0. They now have the 3.1 that is out. It also has a dimmable uh, backlight for the gauge itself. That's the only difference between the 3.0 and the 3.1. Now, many of you know that your temps, you don't want to see over 200 on your belt temp gauge. So the nice part about the Razorback is the Razorback gives you the real time of the belt itself. Now we've tested ours. We've gone ahead and run the razor with the clutch cover off, got the belt temps up, looked at the razor back, and then as soon as we stopped, had somebody with a temp gun that was hitting the belt right there with the temp gun, again, using infrared, giving us the real-time temp what that is, and we are within one degree. So where our mounting location is has worked very well for us, and we, we like having it there. Now, where I mounted the gauge itself, um, first off, Razorback comes, you can get them in, in uh, the bezels in a number of different colors. I went with the orange. Obviously, that's the color of our car, 2014 Razor. So that's what we, we went with. And so the gauge itself, nice part is you have a green light right here that when you're within the normal temperatures, it changes and you end up with a yellow light once you hit 200. At 220, it changes to a flashing red light and then you get a faster flashing red light at 250. And then over to, I believe it's 280, you get a solid red light, which means you're going to shred your belt. Again, anything over 200, you don't wanna see for any extended amount of time. And the reason being is because that belt, it loses its elasticity as the, it heats up and cools down and heats up and cools down. And the hotter you get the belt, the more elasticity it loses and you're going to shred that belt sooner and sooner. Shredded belts are not fun. If you've ever tried to uh, change one out on the trails, you have a lot of things wound around your transmission shaft, around your engine shaft, around the primary. It's time consuming, but you wanna make sure you get it all out of there because 
it will lead to another shredded belt or other problems down the road, which you don't want it to deal with. Best thing is put the cooling systems on that you need to do to cool those belts and also monitor it with a live reading of the, with the Razorback 3.0 or 3.1. So let's go ahead and power it on and take a look at what we've got. Now, another thing that I did before I turn this on, I have mounted additional switches up here. The reason I do that is because when the instant I turn the key on, I don't want a lot of accessories that are drawing from the battery and also drawing from the stator as it's trying to start the engine itself. Yes, I know I said stator. That's because on these vehicles, it's a starter alternator combined. It's called a stator. Most of you probably knew that already, but uh, just to give you a little more information and key terminology. So we're going to turn the key on. Now, as you can see, the Razorback didn't come on. My fuel pressure gauge didn't come on. However, the ride command I installed came on. My um, different voltmeters and things have come on. As you can see, I have 12.5 volts. So I'm doing just fine there with nothing started in the key on. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch for my Razorback. It lights up. There's our green light we talked about. Current temp is 98 degrees, which is about right because it's currently 100 degrees here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we're in the shade, and so we're sitting here kind of nice. Average, as you can see, it's starting to drop from, from how where I've turned that key on, or actually powered it on. But it also shows me my high. So when I initially turned it on, there was some heat in there because I moved the razor. So it was 103. Now it's going to average that out and keep that average for me. That green light will stay on. This is the nice thing is it can give you all that information for every time the current ride on that gauge. It doesn't store that information, but what it does is it gives you for that current riding time while there's power to the gauge itself. So again, this is the Razorback 3.0. Also where we mounted it, I used the auto meter single gauge pod and I used a simple hose clamp, installed it right behind the steering wheel, make sure we had some clearance here that it's not going to rub and interfere with the steering wheel itself. It's in a nice easy visual spot, ran my wires down in through and up uh, up into the dash to the switch, which I'm able to turn off and on. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off, turn my key off, and also the main cable wire that goes back to the sensor itself that we've installed. Right back there in the top center of the clutch housing, just above the, the belt itself. Now this is not in the cover. That was another reason I didn't want to install it in the cover was because I didn't want to have to disconnect that every single time that I remove that clutch cover. I remove my clutch cover after every ride and blow my clutches out to make sure they're nice and clean and that uh, they're also um, functioning correctly and not having any other issues. I don't leave it neglected. Do a quick belt inspection as well. One other thing about the Razorback that I forgot to tell you, there is a quick, there is a screwing disconnect right here. So if you do mount it in the clutch housing, you can unscrew it there uh, and disconnect it so you can remove the clutch housing so that you're not having to take the sensor itself out. Because again, remember, we glued that in there with the RTV sealant. All right, so once again, I hope you like the content. Please feel free to share and like the videos. Also, if you're not a member of our community, please subscribe. Cyborg Pirate, and don't forget to check us out on cyborgpirate.com. Thank you and have a great day.